We are, with American taxpayers' money, enabling the Palestinians on the West Bank to drain the aquifers of the West Bank, creating conditions that, as my colleague Ben Lerner, who used to work for Sarah Stern, put it, transforms the age-old ambition of Israel's enemies of driving the Jews into the sea into one of driving the sea into the Jews. As the saline water of the sea fills the voids that are emptied by our wells being drilled for the Palestinians. These are the sorts of things that give rise unmistakably to a moment of truth. A moment when truth must be spoken when people like our colleagues and friends from Capitol Hill need to hear us speaking the truth, when the American people, and yes, our friends overseas, notably but not exclusively in Israel, need to be hearing the truth, not something very different from our leaders, particularly President Obama. So it is at this moment that we are particularly appreciative of both Sarah Stern and Emmett and what they are doing. And of course, appreciative of all, all of you who are making it possible for them to do what they're doing. And so it is with great pleasure and without further ado that I present to you um, a great model of the speaker of the truth, our first award winner tonight, Ayan Hirsi Ali. The threat of radical Islam to all of us, particularly to Israel and America, as these are the two entities that um, they have singled out, is not just a military threat. It's not only the suicide killings. It's more insidious than that. The leadership of radical Islam have a violent agenda that attracts most of the attention but they also have a non-violent agenda. And that non-violent agenda, the Muslim Brotherhood, for instance, and other radical Islamic non-violent organizations are right here in our midst. I want to use this award and the confidence that you give me to continue, excuse me, please, to continue to keep up the awareness that I think some Americans are getting and other Westerners, so that we not only understand where that threat comes from, but that we also develop a counter narrative to all people. I don't think that most, just because you are Muslim, you are doomed to be a fundamentalist or a radical Islamist. I think once we present a counter narrative to the story that they provide, the utopia that they have people hope for. If we do that, I think we could win this battle. And I will use this award to continue that message. Thank you so much for having me.